is the, the operational control activity in real time. The main areas that we have focused in using location intelligence and manufacture 4.0 apply to mining. And the core of the infrastructure is allocation intelligence, one of the core components that allow to measure where things have been, how close one to another, and record all that information and then apply artificial intelligence to get to the KPIs that the customer want, including the dashboard builder, the data lake, and so on, so on, real-time streaming, and so on. Then the location intelligence apply already to the business that interests in you. We have multiple, pro multiple projects that allow us to locate things and record this data and then come out with different solutions, no one. And that's important. This is not a cut out such service that does something. It gathers the data and then allows you to apply uh, mathematic models, artificial intelligence, learning machine and get the different uh, solutions like vehicle tracking, um, uh, social distancing, that's an application from COVID that have been deployed in some uh, mines in Peru. And as a tracking, then uh, this is one of the solutions that we have implemented for our customer. The core component by itself is the infrastructure that sits in the bottom, that is a platform with edge and cloud components that allow to resolve connectivity and uh, auto deployment, control, digital twin definition, digital twin status control, and so on and so on. Then the architecture is an IoT platform that addresses the issues of digital twin, proximity control, edge and mesh intelligence, cloud, security scalable, and more important, semantic IoT protocol. We own a pattern of IoT semantic protocol. The business is us. Uh, we provide an end-to-end -end solution with including the hardware, the provisioning, the security, the, the all the, the components that requires an end-to-end -end solution and is monthly rent for SaaS solution. We have proved it, customer like it. And this is some of the member of the team and uh, with a lot of experience, they're coming from different backgrounds. This is one of the more important or main uh, customers that we're working in the mining industry and some of the use cases. And we have been able to build relations with provided the business model is to business development. And we have several companies with presence in different mainly in Latin America. And this is the, the main channel or, or the strategy of the channel that we have. And then we're looking for around four four hundred thousand dollars for 10% of the company. That's what I have to say. Ready for your questions. Carlos, thank you very much. The um, I'm not a mining engineer, so I, I spoke to some colleagues of mine that um, are senior management in that space of different mines, and uh, I um, spoke to them about the, the the service or the products that that uh, ID4 do, and they completely agreed that situation awareness is is, is a valid problem for, for the mines. I'm, I'm talking about in, in in Australia. Situation awareness is safety is 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 number one for what they want to do. In Australia, they said it's quite a flooded market from the big players, Rockwell, ABB, Honeywell, um, etc. And they also said that each site is completely unique depending so some some places may use LTE, some Bluetooth low energy, 
um, depending what they need, RFID. So each site was unique in its requirements. Um, and I, my, what I interpreted from my conversations with them was that it's because it's so Im considered so important in Australia about what they use the word situation awareness um, is that in Australia, there are already, already a lot of big players in that market space. Whether your the details of your model offers something different that I, I, I I, I, I don't I don't know because I haven't I haven't well um, maybe you're different much. realizing the infrastructure because the the mines especially in Peru they have no electricity forget about connectivity and then the uh, options or one of the options that we provide is basis and BLE and we are able to use in proximity through a set of beacons no connectivity and then have a proximity gateway in what is moving and then get all that data get to the point of data and push it and because our sensors they are smart then mm. we can calculate who saw who for how long and then you can imagine you can bring all the business data and come out with the business conclusion that mm. you need this mm. is one of the things that for the uh, market the cost and we push in new technology. I mean, I'm very aware of Honeywell. Uh, this is where I'm coming from. Honeywell yeah. offers very expensive equipment yes. with very old technology yes. Yes. that requires a lot of infrastructure. And yes. because the needs in South America, they differ. And they, they, I mean, you get into a mine, there's not electricity, then you go, go yeah. what? And if you come in, you need to put electricity, you need to put connectivity, mm. it, it, it's, a, it's over then that's the big difference that we have. And we come in with using nano computing, SPT32, uh, we come in with beacons, built in China, then price way, that we really in what customer can afford and they see the value. Wow, okay. Sounds like um, I operate in the building management space and yes, Johnson Controls, Honeywell, it's rock, et cetera, they, they, because they have such a brand name, a price comes with it, and they then have the client. The, the client's committed to, to, to them, and, and so they're controlled by the large players. So whether it's possible to enter through some smaller mines, which don't have the budget for big players like that, that, that may be possible. I, I, I don't know that. That, that may be possible. Mm. Okay. Mm. Any other questions? Oh, my question, my question you answered, you answered when went through the email um, that I sent. Thank you very much. No, the, uh, I think it's a wonderful, yeah, wonderful um, service product that you have. Mm. Very impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the team. Uh, this is the second startup. Uh, I think we are asked. Good afternoon to everybody. We're quantum mining. Uh, I don't know if Angel can you can you share your PPT, please? All right. Thank you, Alexander. Leti, por favor, Carol, le puedes brindar a Ángel Álvarez para que pueda compartir la pantalla. Muchas gracias. Listo, ya está. Excelente. So, yeah, sorry for, for the noise, maybe in the background. Uh, I was working at the mine site, so I have a not typical schedule, so I'm at the airport going home. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, maybe I, I'm going, I'll go a little bit fast because you already have seen this PPT presentation. So, uh, Angel, maybe we could go next. Uh, next, please. Uh, siguiente, yeah. So uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, I, I'm, we're currently all the team are working on the mine side. So everybody that works at the mine side know that the, the second most important operational costs are tires at the mine side. So and many of the management that they are using now are manual methods 
and they are not using a lot of IoT services. So we spot an opportunity there. So why is important the tires for mining industry? Uh, the spend, the, the cost per year, it could go from 30 to $50 million in a big uh, operational cost. It, it's important not only in open pit operation, but also in underground operation. Uh, it's not only important because there's a lot of money that it involves, but also the environmental impact that it has at the end of the life. So we spot this problem. Next, next, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, a lot of uh, companies are trying to to incorporate a lot of sensor in their tire management, in tire management. So they are incorporating pressure sensor, temperature sensors. But as you can see in the image on the on the right side, you can spot that the the guy he's measuring with a rule. It's a it's kind of a metal rule that you're using to measure the wear of these tires. But why is important to measure the wear of these tires? Because you can measure with this what's the cost per hour, because one of these tires it could cost from forty thousand dollar to fifty thousand. So if you can calculate, a big company has over hundred uh, of these trucks, so it's a lot of money involved there. So the other important aspect is that you can rotate. So it's not going to end in the same position that you start. You got to rotate. So they are measuring to rotate uh, amount at each percent in each position. So that's why it's important. Next, next, please. So, so we, we spot this manual process. We want to propose a sensor, an IoT solution. Very easy. It's a plug and play service. They're going to insert this sensor on the tires, on the tire belt. So it's going to capture how the tire is, is going through their through its life. So we're going to capture this information. Next next slide, please. So all this information goes to our platform. We're using a, we, we already use this platform for our pilot test in, in a front loader. So we capture value information. So we're, we're working now. Uh, we're building our platform in Amazon Web Service. So we're doing that there. Sorry for the late answer on the email. So uh, I, I think I already sent very, very late, but there you have the answer. We are using Amazon Web Service. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, it's very scalable, this solution, because it can go from open pit to underground. It could go from Peru to Australia to Canada. All the mines, the standard process is a manual process. N next slide, please. All right, next slide, please. So the impact that we are proposing is like uh, to to increase the, the tire life from seven to 10%. It could be more, but we are, we want to be conservative. It could increase also the mining track utilization because uh, to do this process is a manual process. So they take the time when the mining track is in the refueling process. So they are going to measure the, the tires. So we want to eliminate completely that time. So we're going to save time, increase the utilization. Uh, the third process is uh, maybe typical in Latin America because a lot of tires are going to be retreated. So we want to increase up to 30%. And also, but not, but not. I think it's not the less important, but it could cause a very positive impact on the environment. I think that's what we want to share with you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody. May I ask a question, please, Mario? Sure, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Please. Well, wow, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I, when I saw the PDF that Mario sent me, I was very impressed with uh, with the product. So that, uh, but I, I, some of the images you showed then I, I didn't see in the PDF. So with the sensors in the tire, you're seeing you're gathering in real time constant data on the temperature of, of the, let's say the the wear data of the tire the temperature etc cetera, etc cetera. so right. you you can also you also know the so from the gps you know the track that it's taking so you you can map, then map that data against weather against the routing uh the driver etc is that what you do what you would do uh, actually, 
the, mine, the, the mining companies, they already have the GPS data. They already have the pressure. I, I'm yeah. not saying all of them. But yeah, of course, that, that's, the, that's the intention. Mines that did, the mining companies, they, they don't have the temperature and the temperature and pressure sensors we're incorporating. Mm -hmm. We have a, a solution agnostic to the OEM. So yeah, we can we can do all that data analytics. So about the behavior of the driver, about the yeah. which part of the whole row is is going yeah. to need to maintain. Yeah, all that information is possible. Yep, yeah, that's right. Wow, that's valuable. Last question, please. I'm curious. So from the gateway, how what wireless technology are you using then to gather that information? So I understand so, it's Bluetooth to the gateway. And uh, no, actually, we're using Wi-Fi now. Each sensor is transmit through Wi-Fi okay. to the gateway. From the gateway, okay. it goes with uh, with L LTE, the 4G okay. that most of the mine has. And if the okay. mine, uh, some older other have the Wi-Fi mesh, so we are connecting with that one. Okay. Also. Yep. Okay. That's what we do. Yep. Okay. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you both and. Let's work with the next uh, startup, please. Hi, Tristan, everyone. Uh, my name is Mauricio Mesones. Um, I'm uh, the CEO of Heavy. It's an artificial intelligence company. And I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully it goes well. You uh, let me know if you can see my screen, please. Yes. Great. So at Heavy, we develop hardware and software solutions. Uh, we are uh, designers, uh, we assemble it, and uh, we manufacture uh, every component that you see here. Uh, we've we've made several uh, different types of hardware, and they're all centered on computer vision. Um, to go along with this hardware, we've developed the, an operating system that goes into these um, smart cameras, and then also um, a cloud platform that manages all the information and notifications. Uh, three of the solutions uh, that we have developed uh, are a get detection system, a fatigue uh, monitoring system, and a collision avoidance system. The most advanced and the one that has uh, gathered most of the attention of the mining sector is the first one, Heavy Get Smart. And it's a system that we developed to actually monitor uh, the ground engaging tools uh, when they break so they can alert the operator and, and the supervisors uh, before an event of a uh, get hitting the crusher. These are just some pictures of uh, uh, an installation at Constancia Mine, where I am actually right now. Uh, we are on our fourth installation of, uh, of our Generation 4. It's been a huge learning curve since the beginning. Uh, since a year ago when we first installed the first system. And you can see our uh, our edge here is a 3D vision, uh, which, we, uh, which gives you uh, a, a huge advantage over uh, conventional 2D computer vision that a lot of the, our competitors are, are using and have patented. So we have patented, uh, we've presented a patent application on 3D computer vision and its advantages. And here's a small video, a uh, sample of the latest system that we just brought here into, we just brought this system into Constancia Mine and it's gonna be installed uh, this Saturday. So that's just an example of, uh, uh, so you can see the final product, what it looks like. It's very mature after a year of uh, uh, four generations. And this is how it actually works on real uh, life on a Hitachi, huge Hitachi excavator at this mine site. And you can see in red there, 
where you can uh, the system is detecting a uh, missing tooth event. And of course, there's a, there's a, a, a cloud platform that uh, plays along very well. And this is very unique to us because none of our competitors has it. When an event is detected uh, on, the, on the equipment, a notification is sent to all the registered users and you can browse through the events and see the details of them. This is very useful because AI is not perfect and sometimes there is false positives and um, this is very helpful for the mining operators to be able to understand if the system has made a mistake. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please, Thorsten. Yes, um, Mitya, hi. Good evening. Thank you very much. Wow, your, your English is much better now than in the video that I saw. Maybe you're more relaxed now. <laughs> Thank you. The, um, I didn't realize it does um, video analysis. That's how it picks up the, the gets. Wow, that's clever. And like you said, with your the data collection for AI, AI it, it's constantly learning. And then that learning from that machine you take with you for all your other installations. So you, it's constantly becoming refined. I think that that's absolutely brilliant. I'm surprised that the, um, that's interesting. That's even more important than fatigue. The speaking, uh, some colleagues of mine working in mining industry in Australia, for them, even though the, yeah, so, the, the shift to autonomous vehicles trucks is quite slow because of the, the, the cost of the trucks and um, driver fatigue is a big thing. And, uh, and um, yeah, so I, I having what your video, so again, it's video analysis, picking up the movement of the, uh, of the operator of the truck is how that, well, I, I, I guess you can insert any parameters you want it, and, and it does a video analysis. So I guess you get some flags and then someone can have a look. Oh, okay, they're sleepy or they're not sleepy. Yeah, that's correct, Torsten. We we have developed a platform really, not a solution, but a platform to deploy uh, computer vision applications. Mm -hmm. the, these three are just some examples of what our platform can do. But mm -hmm. there's people that are interested in using it to monitor avalanches. Uh, in the villages near Peru, in the Andes, and you can predict them and save lives. There's people that are use, interested in using it in the fishing industry to calculate how much fishing uh, they are catching uh, before it hits their processing plants. And there's applications in agriculture and also in yeah, okay. um, industrial safety. So what we have developed is a platform. These are just some examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, then then the more data you get, the more f the less false positives you'll get, as as you'd said, I imagine. That is correct. In this specific project, we started uh, at the very beginning with like an eighty five percent precision, uh, which yeah. is like kind of like a measure yeah. of accuracy. But yeah. over time, we are we've reached ninety nine percent precision uh, and detection in some of the components that we are trying to detect. Wow, that's amazing! Gosh, oh, that's a no. That's a very impressive product that uh, that you've got there. I on your on one of the. I'm not sure whether it's your website or the video. I saw it. It showed um, vehicle collision uh, avoidance, but I guess it's not actually avoidance. It's collision awareness. All all you do is is you make it aware, and then and then someone else responds to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't yeah, take control correct. of the vehicle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the current uh, application that we have, it's uh, mainly focused on detecting people. Yeah. Um, compared yeah. to proximity sensors, uh, our cameras uh, can detect when there's people where there should not be people. Wow, brilliant. brilliant. And I love your story on your on your uh, on your website. Yeah, very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with Thank the project. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mario. Nice meeting you, Torsten. Okay. Bye.
¿Qué tal, Leti o Mario? ¿Me podrían indicar quién continúa? Hola. Hi. Hello. Could you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. It's, it's good. Hi. Uh, well, uh, I'm Andre Franklin. I'm the CEO at Multisim XR. So we are an immersive technology company. Uh, we, we aim to bring the best learning and training immersive experience. Uh, we work for more than five years developing 200 simulators in Peru and also in Latin in many industries, industries like mining, like uh, electrical industry or utilities, also uh, educational institutions, uh, health centers, and, and many of that. So in all of this time that we work in this kind of simulators, we find uh, this insight uh, that could apply and scale to any industry. The training and induction process for employees. Uh, because uh, there are a low investment in human capital, this, this is for the expensive cost because you are recurring traditional training. Also, many type of trainings has a low percentage of knowledge retention. For example, traditional training is below to 20% and also the working over loss because of training. We are facing that uh, with our solution, the immersive cross-platform uh, simulators where, where you can scale to 3D simulator in desktop and also in, in web to VR and AR uh, technology to train and certificate some procedures, um, pro uh, processes, uh, in many industries. Our focus now is to cashier and store assistant positions. And our promise is to provide the best training immersive experience 24, seven days a week using simulator in order to have a competitive assistant with a retention greater than 70%. For agile smart onboarding, also to cost time and reduction compet competency assessment. Um, our business model is uh, when you work with us, you just to activate the development of this simulator that take a long to two or three months. After we deploy the simulator, you just pay a, a subscription uh, in a 12 month contract at minimum time. So we develop an ad hoc and customized simulator for your company. And we are looking for this immersive uh, market. Uh, the, the key indicator is in around the world, there are 10,000 of dollars invested in training per people yearly and also 56 hours. Uh, companies invest like a 20% of their ba budget yearly. So we are looking to reduce the amount of investment and also the time you train uh, yearly. Uh, our traction and metrics for this kind of model, because we work uh, in the past in a project uh, uh, contracts, but, but now we are working in uh, our new business model. You, for activation enrollment simulator, you paid uh, $6,000 and Monthly, you pay for the subscription, $300. Our metrics, uh, our CAC is like $100 and our minimum LTV is $6,000. The minimum contract period is about uh, 12 months. And this is our metrics uh, projected for 2002 to 2024. Uh, uh, for companies that want to train people, and also for people that want to, to train and to have this kind of experience. Some of our work, this is a, a bank, a, a day labor for an, an employee in a bank. This is for cashier. This is an interactive 
uh, AR application, and this is for uh, a cashier in a chain store or maybe in a franchises. Uh, this is for our simulator in healthy center. Also, this is another simulator for exportation services. We have also our uh, 2D simulator. Also, we work some kind of simulator for the mining process. For example, a company who sell uh, lights, LED lights, a company also who, who train people, for example, some kind of mining machines, uh, operators in underground and open pit simulators also. Uh, we are looking for a uh, $250,000 for our pre seed funding in order to uh, increase on and improve our platform and also to, to invest more in growth in order to have a base of some of internet in many countries. Uh, this is our team. I'm Andre. Also, we have uh, our CTO who is a developer and also Ayrton Nieves. Some of our client and partners, as we said, uh, we work many industries. So we are now uh, just a pivot in order to have a transversal uh, simulator that we could escape industries like mining and also like electrical. Uh, we like to improve your productivity using virtual simulator. We are working every day to, to improve uh, with our training simulators. Uh, many thanks. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, very much. So, Torsten. Andre, good evening to you. Thank you very much for your email, uh, answering my questions. Wow, I love your product. The um, it's it's like technology meets uh, psychology, and how how we learn. I think it's wonderful. And and your your answer was brilliant. How you depending on the requirements using it. So at the moment we have you have um, via augmented reality, virtual reality, three D different different options and depending on the requirement you you use you use those resources differently the um i was talking with someone uh in in the mines about um the training and they were saying how important it is for example say someone comes from a, a site in mongolia where their understanding of safety is different to coming to a mine site in australia so they've got to redo all the, all the training. And uh, someone else I was talking to was saying that, uh, that I spoke to about your product is that they're looking at um, for millennials. So for young people in their twenties, it the understanding is that they're aligned towards gaming, um, Minecraft, things like that. So the, the, um, uh, I'm not sure where they're doing virtual reality, but but the training that they're the 3D training that they're trying trying to provide is uh, is aligned with what attracts the uh, the young millennials, the, the the young people in their 20s. Because as you said, I I think it was a normal training is less than 10 percent retain or less than 20 percent retention or yes. something, and and I would believe that as opposed to one of your systems where you're engaged and you're learning and it's and i mean why stop even when someone started with a company it's could also it could almost be a continuous thing where you where the employees are continually trained on on anything using your your platform i i think it's absolutely brilliant i think it's brilliant thank you well thanks torsten for your words oh, i love it mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for thank your you. answers, Andre. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you, Andre. Thanks. Okay, Thorstein, the last company couldn't make it, uh, but uh, I think uh, we already finished with all the four uh, presentations. So 
Uh, oh, that was Chumi couldn't make it. Yes, Chumi. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, they. Yeah, nice product with the with the robots. Yeah, so it was interesting. I think you saw in the emails they're using mostly. Yeah, I think they're now moving towards lidar as the most as the most common sensor. That was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, so, you've got some incredible startups there in Peru doing some amazing things. How exciting! I hope you uh, enjoy uh, this uh, presentation and you, you uh, the presentation that you made for us was very interesting. Also, uh, I feel that uh, the audience uh, are like happy to get this. Uh, uh, trends and, and it's not a trend it's all uh, this we are we are there so technology is uh, among everyone so mm. thank mm. you thank you everyone and i hope uh, to see you in sydney soon all right okay let's see i don't know if you are there no so okay thank you very much again and and uh, see you soon